so so long we have been talking about plants its types its benefits and how the plants and animals and humans are interdependent of each other and how the plants prepares its own own food and the plants provide food clothing shelter and the biofuels needed for humans now our topic will be about animals so let us see what do you mean by animals an animal is a living creature such as a dog a lion or a rabbit so an animal is a living creature that is examples is like your dog your lion your rabbit rather than a bird a fish insect or human being so the, a living creature like your dog lion or rabbit can be referred to as an animal rather than a bird a fish a insect or human being any living creature other than a human being can be referred to as an animal so any living creature on earth other than humans are referred as animals and the animals fall into different categories that will be that we will be seeing in our future classes so any living creature other than a human being can be referred to as an animal so now we are going to see the classification of animals so let us see about the classification of animals the scientific classification system is divided into seven major groups so the animals itself scientifically has been classified into seven major groups first is the animal kingdom so first is your kingdom next is your phylum or division the second major group is your phylum or division the next is the class the fourth is your order then your family your genus and your species so these are the seven major groups that have been scientifically classified so the animals have been scientifically classified into seven major groups the first is your animal kingdom then your phylum or division your class your order your family your genus and finally your species so the kingdom is the largest group and a species and the species is the smallest so among these seven major groups the kingdom is the largest and the species is the smallest in the animal kingdom the term phylum is used and it is the second largest group so when you take the animal kingdom the phylum comes second under the animal kingdom it is the second largest group so the animals have been scientifically classified into seven major groups that is your kingdom your phylum or your division your class your order your family your genus and your species and when you consider the seven groups the kingdom is the largest and the species is the smallest and the phylum or division is the second largest in the group next we are going to see the animal reproduction and development there are certain animals that lay eggs and there are certain animals that give birth to young ones just like humans so animal reproduction and development so first is birth growth reproduction and death represent the four stages of the life cycle of all animals so the animals are classified into four that is a life cycle there are four stages in the life cycle of an animal first is your birth then is your growth your reproduction and finally death so this is the four stages in the life cycle of an animal birth growth reproduction and finally death 
Although these stages are common to all animals, they vary significantly among species. So, these four stages of the life cycle are common for all animals, but according to each animal, it varies significantly. So, each animal is quite different. Animal development. The processes that lead eventually to the formation of a new animal starting from cells derived from one or more parent individuals. So, the cells that are derived from one or more parent individuals allow the process of the formation of a new animal or a new growth. Development that occurs following the process by which a new generation of organisms is produced by the parent generation. So, re growth and development takes place according to the organisms produced by the parent generation. Next is the characteristics of animals. So, let us see the different characteristics of animals. The first is Animals are multicellular, so they have a number of cells in its body. Animals are multicellular. The next is they are heterotrophic, that is obtaining their energy by consuming energy, releasing food substances. So animals are heterotrophic, that is they obtain, they get their energy by consuming energy, releasing food substances. So they consume a lot of energy releasing food substances and hence they are known as heterotrophic. The next is animals typically reproduce. So most animals reproduce. So the third characteristics is animals typically reproduced. Next, they are made of cells that do not have cell walls. So normally a cell has a cell wall. But in animals, they possess cells that do not have a cell wall. Next is, they are capable of motion in some stage of their lives. So, they keep moving. So, they are capable of motion in some stage of their lives. So, these are the characteristics of animals. That is, animals are multicellular. They have cells that do not have cell wall. They are heterotrophic, that is they consume uh, sub food substances that have energy releasing substances. Then they typically reproduce and they are capable of motion in their life. Next, animals change as they grow. So like humans, animals also change as they grow. Animals get larger as they grow older. So from a baby for example if you take a puppy it is small and as it grows bigger it keeps growing larger so animals get larger as they grow older animals go through life cycle changes called metamorphosis so that changes that takes place in a life cycle that is a baby then a small a larva or a pupa and finally a butterfly so there are changes in the life cycle and this change is known as metamorphosis. So the changes that takes place in a life cycle are known as metamorphosis. It means a change in body form. It causes big changes in insects such as the butterfly and smaller changes in insects such as the grasshopper. So when you compare a butterfly or a grasshopper, in a grasshopper the changes is quite small whereas in a butterfly the changes are a bit big so these so the metamorphosis causes big changes in insects such as the butterfly and smaller changes in insects such as the grasshopper so we have seen the classification the scientific classification of animals and is divided into seven groups that is your kingdom your phylum or your division your class your order your family your genus and your species and the kingdom is the largest in the group and the species is the smallest and the phylum or the division is the second largest in the group then we've seen that there are four stages in the life cycle of an animal that is birth growth reproduction and finally death and these stages 
are common to all animals but there is a significant difference among species then we've seen the development animal development and the characteristics of animals that is they are multicellular the cells do not have a cell wall they are heterotrophic and they reproduce and are capable of motion and animals change as they grow that is they grow larger as they grow older and this changes that takes place in a life cycle is called metamorphosis so this is about the classification of animals